Um, let me start by saying that uh, our public lands are not used equally among all Americans. That will come as no surprise to any of you. And that has been something I've actually been focused on for a very long time, uh, long since before this job. Uh, when I was at REI, we did a, um, a couple of significant market research studies to understand who's using public lands, uh, and how are they using them? And so I'm delighted to know that you are all doing your work and bringing your talents and your backgrounds to uh, Park Service in this case, but more broadly, just to help us understand what we need to do to make sure that our public lands feel welcoming and relevant to all Americans, not just a subset, and, fr and frankly, uh, international community as well. Uh, this has put, I imagine, careers and people on your radar you wouldn't have had before. Nobody can take that away. It's also put you on the radar of people within the Park Service, and I'm guessing beyond the Park Service, that now know you're out there, and it, you might have reshaped their thinking on what a historic preservation specialist looks like, age, uh, background. You have illustrated for them uh, your capabilities, and I think that will help those who come behind you. And then it will be up to us to make sure that we continue to support these programs. I will say in our 2016 budget, which we've not yet got through Congress, but we're working on it, dramatic increase to our uh, youth programs and um, uh, outreach to communities of color. So that's reflected in the president's priorities and my priorities. It's not yet been approved by Congress, so we'll see if it's Congress's priorities or not. The Latino community uh, is already and can continue to be supportive is, I'd say, you know, uh, Hispanic Access um, Foundation, uh, HECHO, um, Latino Outdoors, there are a number of organizations that do show up and that's so important. And I think when you do show up for these events like Browns Canyon, um, you put a, a face on conservation that people aren't expecting. and. I would suspect you'd get a very warm welcome because there's probably, I mean, if you look at the organizations that have typically been involved in conservation, their boards of directors and their supporters are largely Caucasian and old. And I might be on the younger side, right? So um, they're looking at their support network, they're looking at their advocacy, and they're saying, we are in trouble. Once there's a line item in the budget, it's actually very visible to remove it. And so we've very much ramped up the youth programs broadly, and, a, and, a, and most of those are focused on uh, more urban areas and urban youth so that we're getting uh, kids at a younger age and exposing them to the kinds of work that you are now all engaged in. But, uh, It'd be very interesting for me, and we won't have time, but I'd love to know your journeys and how you got yourself into historic preservation. You know, what was the catalyst that got you there? Because you're well into your way in grad school, uh, so it didn't start because of this internship, which oftentimes it does. So maybe we can do a lightning round on that when we're done. Uh, the community college I went to, Palmar College, uh, has a, a program in archaeology. At the time, I was a part-time student. I was working full-time doing um, construction work. So these were Saturday classes, doing excavations, doing surveys, to go into more state construction work. work. Yeah, more <laughs> construction work, yes. But I was outdoors and doing yeah. something I, I really enjoyed. And, um, and that's what kind of kept me going through. It took me eight years to get through community college because it was part-time, but it, yeah. was, it was that I was focusing on, on something that had to do with, with uh, again, with, with uh, preservation or at least the, that whole investigation of something that was very important. Really cool. so. For me, it was... Um, my background is in the outdoors and community engagement. I visited my first national park at the age of 18 through an internship with Environment for the Americas, which I am with, again, through this program. Um, but I, I you know, enjoyed hiking and 
saw, I didn't see a lot of other people that looked like me mm-hmm. um, visiting the parks and in ranger positions. And I thought, you know, that, that was something I was invested in, bringing my community into these natural protected areas. And I really do believe in that idiom, you know, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. And as a passionate advocate for social justice causes, with all my other interests in the arts and architecture, I just feel like preservation is a really great way of of keeping what we've got as far as our culture and our background, but also a way of expanding beyond just renovating rich people's houses for rich people to go visit, um, to actually become something where we can answer some of the social justice problems that we have in this country through the use of historic preservation. Mm -hmm.